So to bring things into the glove box, and again, this is a reminder that anytime you're working in the glove box, um, you need to bring anything you want to have in there with you. So that includes things like a stopcock, a septum, um, stir bars, that sort of thing. So if you're gonna bring in something like this Schlenk flask, um, it either needs to be under vacuum, so closed, having a vacuum on it and closed, or preferably open and then without the septum installed so that if you needed to say bring a compound out of the glove box to use you could put in bring in all of these items like this separately and then uh, bring them out sealed in the cases of any item that can be heated um, should be removed from an oven before being brought in the glove box so that we don't bring any water in with us so here is the vacuum pump this is what will be used to um, evacuate the antechambers, which are here, here, and here. There are the valves for those. So this is the valve that <coughs> evacuates the small antechamber. Here is the refill valve for the small antechamber. The refill valve for the large antechamber. Evacuation valves. So the, back, the valve to the vacuum pump, you can see this tube and call it to the vacuum pump. <coughs> um, so if the default position of the um, port is under vacuum, we'll need to refill. Before we start, so we'll hit the refill. Then we can open the port and place our flask and the items that we want to bring in with us into the box or into the port. It's easiest if you can put them on a metal tray of some kind and also push them as far in as possible closest to the other door. This makes retrieving them on the inside much easier. And then close this. You don't need to close this too tightly. You don't want to damage the seal and prevent it from working further. At this point, we want to turn on the vacuum. This should really be on already. This is just going to be loud and hard to harder to hear me while I'm doing this. So now that we have something in there, we can do our evacuation. So then we would want to record the time that we started that and then wait five minutes before we did the refill. So here is the glove box logbook. And you can see kind of an example of Things. So there's initials of the person, small port, uh, they were doing fast cycles to bring in solvent or something like that. Or for instance, this one entry using a large port, recorded this time and then this time. And you would go from there with recording your, your entries um, each time you uh, begin a evacuation cycle. So to kind of show a dummy entry in the uh, club box law book, so I would have my initial, which port I used, then I would put in the times of my um, evacuation cycles when they started. So something like that, so start at one o'clock, go till 105, 105, go till 110, 110, go till 115, and then I would be in, at 115 so that would be the time that I entered the glove box and then if I'm leaving the glove box I would say out at say 125 so this is my dummy entry I don't know that. something like that if you're not going to leave the glove box you would put no out something like that and then if you're gonna, if you use the solvent in the glove box, you would wanna know which solvents you used and that you purged and for how long. So, uh, let me see in, uh, purge 15 minutes. And then writing the actual times would probably be the best. So let's say 115 or 120 to 125. Something along those lines. Just for demonstration, I'm going to show what we would do next. So we would 
close the vacuum side with the valve here and open the refill. And see that brings the pressure back up. Close the refill and then do the, open the vacuum again. This would be the start then of our second cycle. There would have been five minutes between me doing those steps uh, at least, but just for demonstration purposes, I'll show it like this. And you can go ahead and do another refill. Once you've refilled the third time, that's the time when you could go into the glove box gloves and actually remove your items from the port on the inside to be used. So the default position for the small port should be that the that it's under vacuum. To reiterate, if you do bring in volatile liquids, so anything at the boiling point below 200 Celsius, it's best if they can be brought in in some kind of Teflon stopper flask. So like this Strauss flask. There are other types of Teflon stopper flasks, but this is probably one of the more common ones. If you can't do that, the same. Um, the, the flask should be capped tightly and then the same quick five um, cycles approach for bringing in solids and non-volatile liquids can also be used for those types of um, compounds that need to, or liquids that need to be brought into the box. So if you need to bring in a large amount of supplies at one time or objects that don't fit in through the small port, you can use the large port of the glove box has a counterweighted door and it also has a tray. The tray can be removed if needed if an object that you're bringing in is too large to fit in either with the tray still in there. Demonstrate the tray rolling out. Right. If you're bringing in really porous objects like a box of Kim wipes or a cork ring, those kinds of things need to be pumped on for an extended period of time, at least 12 hours. Um, so that you can get any water and other air out of them. Um, because they're porous, they can con contain a lot of air, oxygen specifically, and water that we don't want in the glove box atmosphere. Recall again that anytime we bring any glass objects in through the glove box, if they're empty and they can be heated for the purposes, or if they're empty and can be heated, um, they should be brought in straight from the oven so that any water that might be absorbed on the surface of them can be driven off or is driven off and not brought into the glove box with the, with the, the item. 